Andy and I are making our brand new wicking bed here. We decided we'd fit another one into the corner of the greenhouse. Winter's over, so we've moved aside some of our heating equipment, which we won't be using again, I can tell you. And we've got one of our beautiful 585 litre uh, grow beds here. We've set it up, it's lovely fiberglass. We've put the, the water filling pipe in, which runs the full length underneath. And we've used our shade cloth to separ separate our vermiculite. You see we've got our vermiculite here. And now we're mixing up our bamboo straw from our bamboo plantation, this beautiful stuff, and we're putting into it a really good quality potting mix. We'd like to be using our own uh, compost mix, but we haven't got any at the moment. It's still composting. But anyway, that'll be for the next bed. So you can see what we're doing here, and we're going to fill it up to about here, nice and neat. And then we're going to plant some potatoes in it and get the potatoes going. So what do you think, Andy? Is it going to be good? It'll be excellent. I reckon it'll be good too, yeah. Okay, I've got a bit more of that on this side, which I'll help you with. It pays, if you've got to go and buy your own, buy your potting mix, it pays to buy a good quality one. Um, remember, this is not part of our aquaponic system, but it is a junk, an, an adjunct to it, so we're going to be using our aquaponics water to water it with, down through the pipe, but we can use a potting mix that might have some, you know, fertilizers or maybe things like that in it. Not, not the kind of thing we'd want to mix in with our fish, but it's, it's going to be okay, and we're going to be able to grow those wonderful root crops, like, for example, potatoes, carrots, beetroot, all that family of things, onions, um, maybe some garlic, that kind of thing that we that doesn't grow quite so well in aquaponics will grow really, really well in our wicking bed. I think we need another couple, don't you, Andy? Yeah, another one or two. This straw will obviously help the uh, the soil to be nice and friable, and will actually add volume to what we're doing, so that we don't use quite so much of this expensive potting mix. Actually, this potting mix is one that we bought and it's cost us quite a lot of money. They actually retail for $16 a bag, which is pretty expensive. But this potting mix has been made by a company that's produced the potting mix out of various soils and compost, genuine compost. So that's why we're prepared to pay the money for it. And waiting for our own compost pile to mature, we're happy to pay this amount of money. Well, not happy to pay it, but we're prepared to pay this kind of money for a good quality potting mix because we don't want to have rubbish in our garden bed. I've got to tell you about these uh, seed potatoes I got a couple of months ago at a gardening show north of Brisbane. I've already planted some out and I'll show you them in a minute, how well they're growing. These are getting a bit sad and sick looking but they'll still grow. These are a purple potato and I'm told that they remain purple even after cooking. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see. See the flesh in that potato? See it's quite purple and evidently it stays purple even after cooking. There we go, that should do it. And then... I've got this other variety which is supposed to be some kind of special, you know, organic breed of potato that's just wonderful for cooking. Look at that lovely flesh in the seed potato. So we'll plant some of these out. Whole bed of fantastic potatoes. What about that? Well, that's about it. There you go. We've planted our seed potato. And we hope that they'll come up in about a week or ten days. And, um... In a couple of months, three months, we'll have some potatoes. How about that? Why do we build wicking beds? There's some very good reasons for it. The first one is that we can grow crops in here that don't do quite so well in a standard aquaponic system, such as root crops like regular potatoes, sweet potato, beetroot, some varieties of onion, and those kind of things. Now, I hasten to add that beetroots do do, do okay in a standard uh, type aquaponics bed, but they'll probably do a lot better in a wicking bed. A wicking bed gives us the opportunity to grow those kind of things. Now, a wicking bed, why do we like that instead of a regular garden? Well, for a start, it's raised up off the ground. It's in a sealed container, which means we're going to save our water. The only water that's going to be lost out of this bed is the water that the plants actually use. So that's the same as our aquaponic system. So it's very, very water-wise, which is really, really smart for dry, arid parts of the world. The second reason is that by having it in a container like this, we retain our nutrient. We don't lose it to the subsoil. Even the very, very best garden that people can grow, when you water it or you get a lot of heavy rain, that nutrient, that wonderful compost you've gone to so much trouble to make and put in your garden bed, the good nutrients get leached away into the soil below and you don't get the veggie growth that you would otherwise get. We don't have that problem in a wicking bed, especially if we're using it inside a greenhouse like we are here and we won't get a rain problem. So with wicking beds, we could have a number of them in an average backyard garden. 
depending on how many crops you want to grow. If you want to grow a whole lot of potatoes, you're a big potato eater, then you might want four or five like this one. This one's actually two square metres in size, or a little bit over two square yards. So you might want to have 10 or 12 square yards or square metres of wicking bed, as well as probably double that quantity of regular aquaponics beds, which would give you, I reckon, more vegetables than you'd know what to do with.